Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our second lesson on radio and electronic theory. We're going to discuss the VHF Omni range, or VOR for short. The VOR is a navigation aid. It's used to help us navigate to and from VORs and on what we call radials, which we'll be discussing in a little bit. Let's first talk about the aircraft equipment. The VOR has a receiver to tune the frequency. So this receiver is often beside the comm radio. There are usually two radios in one. So you'll see on the usually the left side or the top will be our VHF comm. And then below or to the right, as you can see here, is our VOR frequency. The way a VOR works is it's a phase comparator. So it sends out a signal. So if you think about a sine wave, and then by the time it takes some time to come around, uh, the sine wave has shifted, so it's out of phase, and then the VOR can recognize that change in phase and tell you what radial you are on. Then we have what we call the VOR head, so the instrument there on the right, uh, it has what's called the omni bearing selector. So we turn that to select the bearing or the radial that we want to be on. So if we want to be on the 030 radial, so think of a bicycle with spokes and the 030 radial. So we would set 030 on the top on the omni bearing selector. And we'll talk a bit more about this in a little bit. Has a to and from flag. So it tells us if we're going to or from the station uh, based on what we have set on the omni bearing selector. So let's just say we have 030 set and we are on that radial. So the 030, let's say spoke from the hub, so to speak, we're going to end up with a from indication because we're it's set up to go from the uh, VOR. Then uh, lastly, we have a course deviation indicator, which indicates, indicates the degrees off course. So each tick, uh, each dot is two degrees off course. And so we can use that. And as long as we keep that CDI in the centered, uh, we're on the radial that's selected. On the bottom left, uh, this is how an installation looks like for a VOR. So to tune and identify, we're going to look at a map. We can look at our VNC. We can also look at, uh, they're called uh, on route charts, LO charts. Uh, they're used for IFR flight. But in this case, Thunder Bay is uh, the VOR, and we look at the frequency there, 114.1. So we would select 114.1. It has Morse code, so we just turn up the volume on the VOR and just listen for that Morse code, just to make sure that we're properly identifying uh, that uh, radio. Some airports have uh, what are called VOT, so VOR test frequencies, and uh, what it will be is we'll just tell you what frequency to select. And then there might be a sign at the airport that says that you can check your VOR there. I'll give you the frequency and then it will tell you the distance and the radial you're on. And then what you can do is you can go to that location on the airport, select that frequency and turn the, uh, turn the OBS to the correct radial that it says and then see if your needle is centered or not. That gives you an idea that your VOR is serviceable. So let's get to the meat of the lesson. How do we interpret the VOR? And it takes a bit of getting used to. This is just intended to be kind of an introduction to the VOR. You're not instrument rated pilots, but this will ho hopefully get you in, um, into it. So the key thing to remember is that a VOR is position sensitive, not heading sensitive. So if you're in a given location, no matter which direction you are turned, you will always have the same indication on your VOR. So let's just say, uh, let's just take a look at this diagram on the left. So we have our VOR in the center and we've selected using our OBS knob 030. Okay, so we set 030. This aircraft that's located right here, in this quadrant will show a from flag and a left deviation. So what it's saying is you need to turn to the left in order to get onto the 030 radial. Okay, 
I'm going to change colors here. Let's look on the one on the right. VOR is still set 030. We have a from flag. But the aircraft position is over here. Same direction, but the aircraft's position is over here. And so our CDI right here is to the right. It means we need to turn to the right to get on the 030 radial. Let's look at the opposite uh, down lower. I'm going to change colors again. This aircraft here is still indicates 030. Okay, but we have a two flag because it assumes that we want to go to the VOR. Now notice here we have 030 radial set on the top, but because we have a two flag, what radial are we on? Kind of what spoke of the wheel are we on? Well, we look at the bottom now. We're at 210 radial. We're on the 210 radial because the assumption is we want to go to the VOR. We have a right deflection, indicating we have to turn to the right to get onto the radial. The way to remember is from top to bottom. So if we look, uh, I'm just going to select a different. So from, we have, let's say on the top here, we have from, the radials on the top, to, let's look at this, to the radials on the bottom. Okay, so that, remember that. Now let's look at the last one here. Here we have 030 set on the top. We have a two flag because it wants us to go two. So remember what radial are we on? From top to bottom. So we're on the 210 radial. And our CDI indicates that we have to turn to the left to get on this radial. So this is how to interpret where you are on this VOR with relation to the VOR. Now let's just say I want to figure out what radial am I on? So just think briefly, how are you going to figure this out? You can turn your OBS. So think how you're going to do this. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn your OBS until you have a from flag and the needle is centered. Then you look at the top and that will be the radial you're on. Now let's say we want to go to the VOR. We don't know where we are and we want to fly directly to the VOR. Well, we'll turn the OBS until we have a two indication and the needle centered. And then we're going to turn towards a track or a heading at first that's indicated on the top of our VOR. I hope that makes sense to you. And so let's just say we're 030 here. Uh, let's just say we're right here, okay? We would turn until we have a two flag, and then, oh, it just so happens it's a zero, three, zero. We have a two flag. So now we're gonna turn and fly zero, three, zero and keep that needle centered. So now let's say we need to intercept a given radial. So perhaps in your map, we saw there were some Victor Airways, some low level airways are used by large aircraft. IFR traffic uses low level airways. So you have to, figure out how are you going to intercept that airway. So first you're tuning and identifying, then you're going to select the OBS, whatever that radial is, you'll see it. So here we are, and then we turn and intercept. And we always have to keep in mind, where are we with relation to this radial and turn and intercept it. Here's a useless bit of information. The VOR has a voice feature whereby ATC can broadcast a message such as the ATIS. I've never encountered this before, but apparently it exists. VOR equipment has a receiver, an OBS knob, a course deviation indicator, and a two from flag. The VOR is position sensitive, not heading sensitive. So it doesn't matter what heading you are going at a given position, your VOR will always read the same thing. To set up the VOR, you're going to select the frequency, you're going to set the OBS to the radial that you want to intercept, and then you're going to turn 30, 45, 90 degrees to intercept that radial. Let's go through some sample test questions. You are flying southbound on the 180 radial, so I'm going to draw this out to make life easy for you. Okay, we're going to fly 
So we're on the 180 radial, and I'm going to draw myself a little airplane. There we go. On the 180, and we wish to turn to intercept the 210 radial. So the 210 radial is going to be this radial. You set 210 radial on the bottom and have a two flag. So that makes sense, right? Because we are on this position right here and we're going to, we'd be going to the VOR and you have a two flag. So here's the tricky part. Which way is the CDI deflected? Now remember, the VOR is position sensitive. It is not heading sensitive. So the fact that we are flying heading 180 is completely irrelevant. We are to the right of the radial we want to be on, meaning the CDI will be to the left. The correct answer, A, left. Okay, here's another question. You are headed southbound on the 180 radial. Let's draw this out again. Here's the radial. Here's our airplane. The CDI indicates a left deviation. You now turn northbound, which way will the CDA, CDI point? So remember, it makes absolutely no difference what heading you're on. It is a position sensitive instrument, not heading sensitive. So the correct answer, it won't change. It will still be a left deviation. That concludes this lesson on the VOR. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you in our next lesson.